Hey everyone, it's Robert Hall and today we're going over the 8300 Pro, the newest portable strobe from Godox. Before we jump into today's video, I do want to let you guys know about the new high ISO podcast that I launched with Justin Haugen. You guys know I like to be thorough on my channel, but sometimes making hour long videos just doesn't work on the YouTube platform. So it's a place where we can be a little bit more detailed about life as a professional photographer. Or if you're more interested, we also have interviews with industry leaders. Like you can check out one of the more recent episodes we posted with Joel Grimes. The link is in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. So this video is gonna be very in depth and probably a little bit long. So if you're looking for something specific because you've got a general idea of the 8300 Pro, then you can find the information at these timestamps here. Currently in the US, this strobe is exclusively going to be sold by Adorama as the Explore 300 Pro. And lastly, while this video deals specifically with testing the 8300 Pro and explaining it in really deep detail to you guys, I am going to do a separate video comparing it to the 8200 Pro and the 8400 Pro and letting you guys know which light I think is best for each type of user, and I'll probably release that early next week. So let's start with the size, which is hard to appreciate from a standalone image. While the 8300 Pro is placed right in between the 8200 Pro and the 8400 Pro in terms of wattage, its size is a little bit more complicated. I'm not going to discuss the 8400 Pro here, the 8300 Pro is significantly smaller than the 8400 Pro. The 8200 is longer and skinnier than the 8300 Pro, whereas the 8300 Pro is shorter but fatter. The 8200 Pro with a bare bulb is 10 by 2 by 3.25 inches or 65 cubic inches. The 8300 Pro is 7.5 by 3.5 by 4 or 100 cubic inches. So despite its compact look, the 8300 Pro is roughly 50% larger than the 8200. That being said, because it's much shorter, it lends itself much better to actually fitting in some type of pro rolling case. Anywhere that you can put a pretty hefty lens, like a 135 millimeter lens or 105 millimeter lens, you can probably put this 8300 Pro. Including the bulb and battery, the 8300 Pro weighs in at 2.7 pounds and the 8200 Pro weighs in at 2.1 pounds. So it's only about 30% heavier than the 8200 Pro, but on the surface delivers up to 50% more power, which we'll get to later. Since it's significantly smaller and lighter than the 8400 Pro while only giving up a little bit of power, it may be a better choice for some. Let's talk more in depth about the power. Output tests are always the first thing that I try to do when testing a new strobe. This helps me see if there's any anomaly between its watt second rating and how much light output it actually puts out. As usual, I tested in a reverse mount modifier with the diffusion on to eliminate any hotspots from influencing the results. I also tested these lights live in the Godox user group on Facebook, which if you either just want a resource where you can chat with other Godox users or you want to see my actual results from this, you can join that group. It's linked in the description below. For light output, the 8300 Pro fit directly in between the 8200 and the 8400 Pro. No surprise there. It was about a half stop more powerful than the 8200 Pro and about a half stop less powerful than the 8400 Pro. As I do every year, I'll make an updated output comparisons test between all the Godox lights as soon as I'm able to test the 8200 Pro. One note here, the 8300 Pro has a bulb design that differs from all the other Godox strobes. Normally the flash tube is inside of a glass housing, which means when you pull out the glass, you're also pulling out the tube, but the 8300 Pro's frosted glass diffusion cover actually comes off while the flash tube can stay on the strobe. Because there's a light diffusion on that glass, I know people are immediately gonna think, well, maybe I can get a little bit more output out of this light if I remove this frosted glass cover. And I tested that first thing that I thought, and unfortunately you get no additional power. In fact, in some tests, I actually saw a 10th stop drop. So it seems that diffusion not only does a good job of kind of spreading the light and it's really efficient without reducing any light output. And it's also going to be great for protecting the flash tube of the strobe. So I suggest you leave it on. However, with this removable dome, I do think that there's some opportunity for either Godox or a third party to not only give you multiple glass protection options, like maybe a non-diffuse or completely diffuse higher diffused option, but there could also be some opportunities for some corrective gel covers to go in this spot. The Godox 8300 Pro has a familiar interface, which will just leave any X-Series user 
feeling right at home. The first thing I noticed about the display when I had it side by side to the Godox 8200 Pro is how much the brightness has been improved over the previous 8200 Pro. This will make setting the group and channel and anything you need to see on the back display a lot easier when you're in bright conditions. There are buttons on the back to control the group and channel, turn off wireless functions, test fire the flash, a power button, mode selection to swap between manual TTL and stroboscopic, and a custom functions menu for controlling details like recycle beep and flash duration display. There's a button for the bicolor modeling lamp. The dial on the back can be used to adjust the power output if using without wireless control. Holding the modeling lamp button will change the display to control the bicolor LED lamp output. Pressing the dial in switches the dial to change the color temperature something not currently available on any of the Godox X-Series triggers. As usual, there's a USB port for updating the firmware of the device, as well as a sync jack for connecting to any other type of radio trigger. The last physical button on the 8300 Pro is the battery release button, which is located below the power button. Speaking of batteries, the new WB300P battery will offer up to 320 full power flashes on a single charge and you can estimate roughly this amount of flashes for each power level. Now, of course, extended operational time, wireless communication, and use of the bicolor LED lamp will all reduce the amount of flashes that you can get on a single battery use. This new WB300P battery will recycle a full power flash in one second flat. By the time you bring the flash down to 1 8 power, you are recycling in about 1 10 of a second, and anything lower than 1 8 power can actually keep up with a 10 frames per second camera burst for an extended period. Now this WB300P battery is new and is proprietary to the 8300 Pro, but a welcome move here is that it's actually backwards compatible with the 8200 battery. However, it's worth noting another thing I tested is how this light performs using that old 8200 battery. And unfortunately the recycle time is reduced a little bit. You're gonna see about a one and a half second recycle time when using that 8200 or 8200 Pro battery. I haven't tested it, so I'm completely uncertain how many full power flashes you're going to get on the original 8200 or 8200 Pro battery, but given the fact that it has a slightly larger capacity, I'm going to estimate that you'll actually get about 10% more flashes if you're using that battery. Now let's talk about the bicolor LED modeling lamp, which is a first for the Godox X series and no doubt influenced by its origination on the Profoto B10. The 8300 Pro's modeling lamp can be controlled anywhere from 3000 Kelvin all the way up to 6000 Kelvin. Again, at launch, this can only be done on the back of the strobe itself. You cannot do this on any wireless X series trigger, but I mean, there's plenty of room for this on the Flashpoint R2 Pro Mark II. So maybe we'll see it added as a firmware adjustment in the future. Now, don't get too excited about this as it's only a 12 watt LED, which is very, very dim. In the 8300 Pro stock mini reflector, I metered this at F2 and 2 tenths of a stop at 1 250th of a second and ISO 400. That means just over F1.0 at ISO 100. At two feet, in its reflector. In any type of softbox, this is gonna be less bright. You start bringing it any further than two feet, it's going to be less bright. Many are wondering if this is going to function as a bicolor LED for video use, and I just don't see it. Not only because of its extremely low brightness, but additionally, its fan noise is actually quite loud. Right now I'm about a foot behind the 8300 Pro talking into a lavalier microphone, which is positioned normally and the 8300 Pro's fan is at its highest power because the modeling lamp is on its brightest output. At most, I imagine you'll be able to use the LED for maybe close-up detail shots or getting focus in a really dark environment and maybe if it's really close in a rather small modifier using for some modeling purposes. I will give some credit to Godox for improving the light quality of this LED in that it has a CRI of 95.4, which means it does a decent job of accurately representing colors. And when I tested with my Sekonic C800 colorometer, the Kelvin temperatures were extremely accurate to the temperatures that were listed on the back. Sticking with color, let's talk about how that performs in terms of flash. 
The strobe is equally as accurate as the Godox 8200 Pro when in its stable color mode. This means that it has a Kelvin drift of plus or minus 100K, meaning that from its lowest power to its highest power, it should not move more than 200 degrees Kelvin, and this was consistent in my tests using the Sconic C800. In my tests, the color temperature ranged from 5900 to the low 6000s. Now, if you turn the stable color mode off, then you're going to double that range of Kelvin values and you're going to see a drift of plus or minus 200K instead. Keep in mind, when you turn stable color mode on, you also increase the length of your flash durations. Stable color mode can be turned on or off in the custom functions menu and it's denoted by a C inside a circle. The CRI of the flash is 97.9 .9 and the CCI is 0.1G, so a tiny, tiny bit of green color cast from this flash. In layman's terms, this light is extremely neutral, so extremely white light, and it will render colors really accurately. In high speed sync, however, the color temperature drops to the 5300 Kelvin range with a CRI of 95 and a 0.4 green cast, which is still plenty acceptable. Now, while that's still pretty good, you may find that if you have this inside of a softbox, especially a white one with diffusion, then the 8300 Pro in high speed sync might render subjects a little bit overly warm with a daylight or cloudy environment. Next up, T.1 flash durations. If you turn it on in the custom functions, the 8300 Pro will display T.1 flash durations on the back display, which is similar with all the other Godox X series products. T.1 flash duration measures the amount of time that it takes for a flash to go from its peak brightness, 100% brightness, all the way down to 10% of its peak brightness. And it's a very useful figure for determining how well a flash is going to freeze any motion at whatever power level you choose. Like shutter speeds, because these are fractions, as the second number in the fraction increases, that means the time is actually getting shorter and therefore better at freezing motion. Now it's very common for these figures to be flubbed a little bit by manufacturers um, just because most people don't have the resources to actually test it. Thankfully I have the Sekonic L858DU light meter which has a function to test the T.1 flash durations or whatever flash duration you want. Now surprisingly Godox not only did not flub their results at all, uh, the tests are actually better than the picture that Godox paints for their own device. This is most notable at full power, where my test showed a T.1 flash duration of 1 2 80th of a second, whereas on the back of the device, Godox lists a 1 2 20th of a second. But this held true all the way to its minimum 1 2 56 power setting, where its duration was 1 12 thousandth of a second. Here's a T.1 flash duration at every full power output from actually testing with a Sekonic light meter, not just using Godox's result. Lastly, we need to talk about the mount. Historically, Godox has surrounded their lineup around the Bowens mount. All their AC strobes, the 8600, the 8600 Pro, all have a Bowens mount. The 8400 Pro, while it came with a Godox mount natively, there was also a Bowens mount adapter in the box. The 8200 Pro and all the speed lights, one of the most common ways that you mount them is in a Bowens S bracket. The Godox 8300 Pro is kind of a mix of all of the options. By default, out of the box, it is only compatible with a proprietary and extremely small Godox mount. Godox is quickly increasing the availability of new Godox mount modifiers such as the wonderfully portable ADS-65 and ADS-85 softboxes, which I made a dedicated video on, and you should check out, especially if you're interested in the 8300 Pro. Now, I received the Godox ADR-12, which is a long throw reflector designed specifically for the Godox mount, which will work great on either the 8400 Pro or the 8300 Pro. They have also developed a native grid, gel, and snoot system. Unfortunately, the snoot requires the barn door, which isn't a barn door at all, accessory for it to work, which I would have preferred to see a standalone Godox snoot. That being said, all of these Godox mount modifiers are extremely well optimized for smaller lights such as the 8300 Pro. So if you're really interested in maximizing your portability, then you should keep an eye on the modifiers that are available on the Godox mount because you can get a really small kit going if you're going to commit to just the 8300 or I guess 8400 Pro and the Godox specific mount. Now, most users are probably wondering, well, what about all my Bowens mount modifiers? And in addition to the Godox mount, the already available S2 Bowens bracket will hold an 8300 Pro, making it compatible with any Bowens modifier on the market. 
An added bonus is the ability to zoom the 8300 Pro in the S bracket to make sure the bulb is all the way into the modifier to avoid wasting light output. Finally, there is a more permanent solution in the ADB adapter ring. This ring will attach on the outside of the 8300 Pro, allowing you to attach adapters for Bowen's Broncolor Pro Photo or Ellen Chrome and use any of those modifiers. Essentially, you're going to be able to put the 8300 Pro in probably 90% of the modifiers that exist on this planet, except pulsey buff stuff. Forgoing the native Bowen's mount was a necessary step for Godox in order to get the Godox 8300 Pro down to this small compact size. And with that, I think the photographers that are going to benefit most from the 8300 Pro and the Godox mount modifiers are those that are willing to live within the confines of the modifiers that are available for the Godox mount. That being said, already having a solution available in the S2 bracket as well as the AD-B adapter is just great for those of us who have a closet stuffed with modifiers of a different type. I'll finish with what's included in the production box. It comes with a carrying case, the light, reflector, reflector cap, one battery, and the charger. No adapters or extra modifiers are included in the base kit. The list price of $500 in the US may seem a lot to some users given the compactness of the 8300 Pro, but I'm personally not surprised at all. It's directly in between the 8200 and 8400 in terms of power, it's in between them in terms of size, and it's in between them in price. It seems perfectly appropriate. Now, I don't make broad generalizations on whether you should or shouldn't buy this light. Godox has an insane amount of options now and all are worth the money given their really high performance for relatively low price. Selecting the right light, selecting the right light for you is based on your budget, your type of work, your client demands and the environments that you shoot in. I only hope that the information in this type of video can help you make a decision. You'll find links to the 8300 Pro or Explore 300 Pro since we're in the US in the description below as well as links to all of the new modifiers that are being launched for the Godox mount. I'll be on the lookout for any questions that you leave in the comments below. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos and until next time, keep on shooting. Oh, I'm actually going to end this video with my wife's initial impressions of the Godox 8300 Pro. My wife is not a photographer nor does she ever use flash or lighting equipment, but she did unbox the 8300 Pro and I thought it was funny. There's lots of little bags inside this big bag. Look how cute this little bag is. Oh shit! I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> this looks like this goes on this. Maybe? Yeah, this goes on this. These things are dangerous. <laughs> I don't like these little ones. <laughs> this is the first sound. <laughs> well, here's the actual light. What do you think of the light? I mean, it's sleek looking.